sing, he can act, and he can balance on a ball. Is there anything this guy can't do? Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with Sean Hook about his acting and about the most memorable moments of his career. What is your writing process normally like? I usually start with a melody and I'll build music around it or vice versa, I'll start with music and build a melody around it. I rarely start with a lyric. I find that once I'm singing, I sing gibberish, but sometimes words come out in the gibberish because uh, I feel like it's a, the easiest way to tap into my subconscious. So I'm constantly thinking about something, I, I lose a creative zone. Uh, and I like to visit ideas. I don't like to just sit down for too long and try to beat my head against the wall. I like to like go when the inspiration is fresh, then go for a run or something, come back and, and just continue that process until you to get to the end of the song. Haunted by this photograph and don't know why Your music's also been featured on TV, on some shows. Do you want to tell us about some of the, those experiences, how they came about, and why that's an important tool for musicians today? Well, I guess how the TV stuff first came. I, uh, I moved to Los Angeles about five years ago. It was like my first time. Because the music supervisor heard my stuff on MySpace. MySpace at the time was where you discovered music. And uh, she set up a showcase for me at ABC, the TV network. And shortly after that, I got a call from ABC being like, you know, we, we love your writing. We'd like to hook you up with a composer for one of our TV shows. See if you guys can come up with something. And we did, and they liked it, and so I just kept getting more work. And then eventually, I signed a writing deal with ABC. And then they'd be like, okay, here's a scene. <laughs> Go write a song to that, which was a lot of fun. It was a it was a creative challenge, but it was also a good outlet, and also a great great exposure. I think it's important nowadays to to have that exposure. Now you've also acted. Is that something you're going to pursue in the future? Well, while I was living in Los Angeles, I was uh, taking some acting classes because I enjoy I enjoy acting. Uh, and I was auditioning, and I booked a show on Bones, <laughs> the TV show, and I played the killer, which is kind of funny. And I killed a piano player. It was kind of ironic. <laughs> We arrested him in Baltimore. Seven other residents in Karen Lynn's building reported missing items right around the time that Levi died. It's jewelry, silverware, cash. But that was fun. Like when the director said action, I was in it and it, it was similar to being on stage and starting a song. So I'm looking forward to expand on that a little bit more. It's not as inspiring as music when creating something and, and, and myself, but it's still, it's still a fun creative project. So close I can take What has been your number one moment so far in your career? I remember I opened up for Heart, and that was kind of the first show that really like made me believe in myself as a as an artist. Because at the end of the show, I got a standing ovation, and this was before Heart went on. And then I sold. I only brought a hundred CDs because usually I was only selling like twenty CDs at a time, and I sold out my CDs before I got to the table. And so, and I had a lineup of people wanting autographs, and I was just, I was like, wow, this is really cool. I, I think I'm on this. Onto something. So that was, I think that was, a, I don't know if that's number one, but that's one that came to my mind. The cards are in play. I'm sitting on a hand that no one can take away. Tell us about some of the other acts that you've had the chance to play with. It's funny, I've opened for a lot of classic rock bands like Heart, um, The Beach Boys and Chilliwack and Ario Speedwagon. I also I did a show with Feist and Sarah McLaughlin and that was almost maybe the number one moment was that show. I did it in Victoria and it was on the Parliament steps. It was for British Columbia's 150th birthday. There was 100,000 people. It was an outdoor festival. It was amazing. It was just me and a grand piano. Sarah McLaughlin just played before me. Feist was playing after me and I was like, how, how did I get this gig? <laughs> is the Guinness world record that you hold? <laughs> well, I grew up in a small town. I had a long time on my hands. <laughs> but uh, I, have a, I broke a Guinness world record for standing on an exercise ball for the longest time. Oh, that does sound hard. How long was it? It was, uh, it was three hours and 16 minutes. And that, okay, the standing in one place was the hardest part. Because once, once I was on, it was okay. I wanted to get a, a record for setting up 
<laughs> a series of exercise balls and jumping from ball to ball because that was hard. That's tough. Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Mm -hmm.